welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Nathalie, I'm a musician and today we have a fourth requested video. It's a very specific topic, we're going to talk about how to increase our fingers speed and the technique in order to be able to play all those scales and etudes and all those fast pieces with control and with ease. So here are a couple of my tips and let's just dive right in. So the first thing we want to talk about is posture, because if we are not comfortable just sitting at the piano, there's no way we're going to be comfortable playing fast notes. Um, when I sit at the piano, first thing I check is are my feet in front of my pedal? Um, you know, because so they are close and I don't need to move my feet a lot. Um, I also make sure that my feet are flat on the ground, because I know that for me personally, when I'm reading a new piece of music or I'm doing a technical exercise that is a bit more challenging than it used to be. My feet are the first indicator that my body is stressed. <laughs> um, either my heel will come up, my toes will curl, something will happen with my feet. And so I'm always very uh, cautious to make sure that these guys <laughs> stay as relaxed and comfortable as they can possibly be. Um, the second thing is like my knees are about a 90 degree angle. I'm not a tall person at all, so they're a little bit wider than 90 degree, but just to make sure that my feet are flat on the ground. And then we kind of get to our chair. So there's a number of ways to sit on a chair, obviously. What you want to make sure uh, of is that your spine is aligned and is that your skeleton is keeping you straight. Not any abs or back muscles, not your shoulders, they're not keeping you straight. That's not the function of a muscle anyway. You have a skeleton to keep you where you need to be. <laughs> and so you want to make sure that you are just fully supported by your spine and therefore by your skeleton. Um, the second thing I check is the distance of my chair towards the keyboard and towards my score. Um, because I always want to make sure that I can see and read my notes and still from the corner of my eyes see my fingers. So that I don't have to nod my head all because that is tiring and it's taking energy and basically as a pianist we already have so much to worry about everything that we can skip or that we don't need to do we're not going to do it i always tell my kids that i'm teaching um that a pianist is basically lazy everything that we do not need to do we're not going to do it um and then we come to probably the most important part your fingers. <laughs> um, so basically what's going on is that your weight from the top of your head all the way through your shoulder, elbow, wrist to your fingertips, that weight is going to be equally distributed over fingertips. Why do I say fingertips? Because we want to be able to distribute our weight with as much control as we can in order to control our sound. Because when we push down the key, the way we push it down is going to influence our sound. It's as simple as that. And also, you want round fingertips because it will help you tremendously in trying to achieve more speed. Um, you can compare it with trying to run or to sprint either with your knees not bent, just keep your legs straight and keep your fingers straight. Is this going to be easy to play? Or is it going to be easy to run like that? I don't think so, right? So if you bend your fingers, you really make sure that you play with your fingertips, therefore having full control over how exactly you're distributing your weight and influencing your sound, this is going to make your life a whole lot easier. Um, maybe one last thing to really keep in mind is obviously from our index finger to our pinky, it's kind of easy to keep them round. But our thumb really wants to just hang out here. And that is something we want to avoid. If this has a lot more flesh, it's going to be a lot heavier to move. You might need to have to move your wrist in order to place your thumb under, all that stuff. Again, if we do not need to do a movement, we're not going to do it as a pianist. So if you keep your thumb a bit more diagonal like I am doing right now, you're going to save yourself a whole lot of time and a whole lot of weight. And therefore, it's going to be easier to play fast. 
Number two, slow and steady wins the race. It's a phrase we all probably heard at least once in our lives, and it's right there on the blackboard as part of the background of this video. But yes, do not let your gaze be just narrowed by, I need this piece to be played fast. Because if you can't play it slowly, with comfort, there's absolutely no way that you'll be able to play fast with comfort. Kind of sounds logical, but you know, when you're in the middle of having to play this piece or perform this piece by the deadline, it's very easy to get caught up uh, within your own mind and kind of act on that stress uh, indicator. <laughs> so try and take, take a step back and basically do the math. Like how much time do you have in order to perform this either this exercise or this piece in this particular tempo, then see where is your tempo now and separately. That's a very that's an important one to note. It's something that I always encourage my students to do. Please practice your hands separately and keep doing it even if you know your piece well. Practicing it separately will implement it so much more. In your muscle memory, you will have time to really be aware of what's going on and you'll be able to prevent yourself from making a lot of mistakes if you keep practicing hands separately. And then making sure that you know, like from this metronome that you are now to this metronome that you need to be, how am I going to do that? How do I divide it in between the time that I have? You usually want to make sure that you have at least, at least a day hopefully a bit more time to really implement your goal tempo. So with the time that is left, how are you gonna divide this? And then once you have made your division, you just start working with that. If you don't have a lot of time, you might need to up your tempo a couple of times a day in order to be sure to reach your goal in time. If you have more time, there is a bit more of a relaxed schedule, right? Um, then whenever you have upped your tempo hands separately, then you can just take a step back in tempo, but do your hands together and see how that feels. Try and find the same comfort that you have hands separately with your hands together. And once that is going, you know, then you're building your blocks until you need, or until you reach the tempo that you need. A third thing you want to do is practice your technique. My grandfather was a pianist and he always said that technique is your best friend on stage and it for sure is a hell of a friend once you're on stage and you have these nerves and there's this different chemistry process going on. Um, if you have done the work and spent a little bit of time each day to just figure out uh, what techniques are used within the piece you will have so much more to fall back on than just the practice that you did on the piece itself. So maybe first things first, what is technique? In my opinion, that is all the movement you need in order to play something with ease. Um, for example, in your piece, you might have uh, scale excerpts or you might have octaves that you need to play in one hand. You might have trills. You might have um, thirds with a lot of black keys. Uh, you might have chord jumps, whatever it is. All those things are different techniques that you can practice alongside your piece. And so if you do that, you are basically taking a big uh, factor out of the equation to make it easier for you because you don't have to worry as much about the notes. You're not practicing your piece, you're practicing the technique that you need. So if you have a scale pattern, you can just practice your scales more. <laughs> or if you have an octave pa pattern, you can take one of the books of Hanno or Marie Cretelon or maybe Johannes Brahms or all those guys who wrote technique books, you know, you can find them online, you can buy them or you can just uh, make up your own exercise and see if it helps you by the next day. Um, but so figure out what techniques do I need for this piece and do them as a warm-up, especially now that it's winter and it's cold. Uh, you might want to spend, or you really do want to spend a bit of time each day just to warm up your fingers. It's basically what gymnasts 
also do, or dancers, or, you know, just make sure that your tendons and your muscles are warm. And uh, ask yourself, like, what I'm, what I'm doing right now, is that actively helping my process, or am I basically just acting like I'm doing a lot of work and it might not be really helpful? It's a valid question to ask. And then just remind yourself that technique really is a very good friend to have once you're on stage or once you're recording. So if this was of help to you, and I truly hope it was, then let me know in the comments below. Or if you have a video to request of your own, also please just let me know. I'm always so honored when people ask me something and think that my opinion or my tips might help them. It's very humbling and I'm very glad that you think uh, that my tips are valid. So um, do let me know if you have a video to request. And if you think this might be helpful to someone else, also please don't hesitate to share. Um, as always, I love to hear from you guys. And I will see you next week with another music video. Take good care, have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next Friday. Bye-bye.